G'day guys, Solid here. Welcome back to another episode of Adventure News. I hope you're all doing well and a big welcome to all the new subscribers over the last month or so. There's been plenty of you, so welcome aboard. We've got plenty to talk about this month. We've got a possible Africa twin middleweight, which is very interesting news. We also have a possible rally edition of the Tenere 700. Husqvarna have just released a long range edition of their 701 Enduro. And finally, we have spy shots of a CF Moto adventure bike using the 790cc parallel twin out of the KTM 790 adventure. So let's get into the video. Okay, so the first topic is Honda's middleweight Africa twin. Rumors are coming out from NCN, the motorcycle news website, and they're claiming that they have an insider at Honda that's confirmed that Honda are in development with a middleweight Africa twin. And the reason these rumors have a little bit of validity is purely because of the specificity of the details. Now, the insider is claiming that Honda are actually using the NC series engine as the basis for the development of this middleweight twin. Now, if you're not familiar with the NC series that Honda currently make, it started out as a parallel twin 700cc motor. It's now a 750cc motor, and it's very value orientated, marketed towards the commuter. It's very economical. It's quite talky, but it's not really a rever. I think it has quite a short rev range, so keep that in the back of your mind. And what this insider is saying is they've taken that 750cc and they've actually bought it out to 790cc to try and get a bit more performance and make it a little more performance orientated rather than commuter focus. So that's very interesting. The other interesting fact about the NC series is it is also available in a DCT version and this insider is claiming that the Africa Twin Middleweight will also have a DCT gearbox as an option. So very interesting that they're keeping that design as well. So MCN are speculating that this will be a value orientated motorcycle with non-adjustable suspension, a fixed screen, a very simple dash. Now I tend to agree with that uh, analysis purely because the high end side of the middleweight market is very, very competitive at the moment with the 790R, we have the 850GS and we have the Tenere 700. So it makes sense Honda would aim for the cheaper end of the spectrum and go for those who are looking for value for money. Now, there's a few problems that Honda could trip up with. The first is that they really need to make this an off-road capable motorcycle. And I say that because if they just make a 19 inch front cast wheel adventure bike that can do light off-roading and you're faced with the choice between the more expensive uh, Africa twin middleweight and then you look across in the showroom and they have a CB500X for half the price. I mean, you don't have to be a mathematician to understand which is the better option. I don't think that would really be a great market strategy to offer a slightly bigger CB500X. I really do think they will have to follow the Africa Twin ethos and make this a very off-road capable motorcycle. I also think that this will be value orientated as well because it's using the NC750X's motor and possibly its frame. So they'll obviously be able to save some money in the engineering department. So hopefully they'll be able to pass on the cost to the buyers. Now I'd like to know what you guys think. Are you looking forward to a hardcore dirt orientated Africa twin or would you prefer a soft road adventure tourer like the CB500X? And the second part to that question is, would you like to see a very high end spec Africa twin middleweight or would you be happy to have a more value orientated uh, budget spec adventure bike that you can kind of take and make your own? Let me know in the comments down below. The second rumor of today is from Bennett's UK and they're claiming that Yamaha UK have type approved a separate model for the Yamaha Tenere 700 and they're calling it the Rally. It's actually coded as the XTZ 690DB. Followers of Yamaha will know that internally Yamaha refer to the Tenere 700 as the XTZ 690. So the fact that they've separated a model as the DB suggests that this is its own model in its own right. 
But Bennett's UK are also saying that they have specifications for this new rally model. And it suggests that the specifications are identical to the current bike, which would mean that this DB model or the rally model will actually be a limited edition or a special edition with really aesthetics like a limited edition color scheme rather than anything else changed on the bike. Myself, I would prefer to actually see something like a Rally or an SP model with better suspension, maybe a little more power from an aftermarket pipe and some better crash protection. That would be something that would appeal more to me rather than just a limited edition version of the current Tenere 700. But let me know what you guys think. Would you prefer a more Rally orientated SP model or would you prefer just to have a limited edition current gen Tenere 700? So the third topic of today is Husqvarna and their 701 Enduro. For 2020, they're offering updates such as a slimmer bodywork. Uh, they're calling it Easy Shift, which gives you shorter gear changes updated traction control, as well as a few other updates. Those things are kind of expected, but what is interesting is they're offering a completely new model called the LR or the Long Range Edition. So what that means is they're offering a model with not only the underseat 13 liter tank, but an additional 12 liter tank up front. Those of you been riding KTMs and Husqvarna's for a while will know that Rally Raiders offered something similar for a while. So Husqvarna have came up with the idea, why don't we just offer this straight off the factory floor and earn us some more money? So it's a fantastic idea. And the positive I guess from this is you can order it straight off the factory floor and you also get factory insurance I'm assuming. So the warranty should cover it. So it's fantastic news and gives you a little more uh, rider security I guess if you're worried about things breaking on the bike. So thumbs up with that idea from Husqvarna and I really hope this does start a trend for dual sports because I think that's a big complaint we all have is how little fuel they have because they're all trying to chase the lightest weight possible. But the first thing most of us do when we get a dual sport, of course, is get a big aftermarket tank. So if manufacturers are offering that off the floor with a manufacturer's warranty, then I think we all win as long as it's for the right price. So the fourth topic of the day is CF Moto. They've been caught out testing a new middleweight adventure bike in China. Now, of course, CF Moto are famous for having an industrial agreement currently with KTM. They actually manufacture the 790 Adventure R for KTM in China, as well as other motorcycles based on that engine. And this spy shot has revealed that this middleweight adventure bike from CF Moto is using the parallel twin 790cc that KTM developed. So that's big news there. Also, we can see in that photo that this is using a 19 inch and 17 inch rear setup with cast alloy wheels. That suggests that it's kind of got a soft off-road potential and is more aimed at adventure touring and being road orientated. So this looks like a middleweight that'll be good for doing big miles on the road with a little bit of dirt thrown in. Will this be enough to get you across the line and consider a Chinese motorcycle given some of the questionable quality control they've had in the past? Now, we do have a proven motor this time around, so maybe that'll get some of us over the line, but they really have to come to the table in bringing quality components to go and be bolted on around this engine. So moving on to the viewer questions, the first one is from Saturated Fat, and he's wanting to know my thoughts on the new Benelli Trail Lencino 500. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Italian guys and girls, can you please correct me down in the comment section down below? If you're not familiar with Benelli, they used to make very high-end super sport motorcycles out of Italy, but they hit some financial trouble and they were bought out by a Chinese manufacturing company. So their manufacturing is now in China, but they've kept the design of the motorcycles in Italy. So what we've got are very pretty motorcycles at not a lot of money. So it's a very nice combination. We've got a very cheap motorcycle. That looks, in my opinion, very, very nice. I do like scramblers. I do like that retro look. Now, as to my thoughts on this motorcycle, well, I think it looks great. I think the value for money is definitely there. It's only 8,700 Australian. 
So that's roughly the price of a CB500X. You would have to spend almost three times that to get a Triumph Scrambler at the moment. So the value is definitely there. My worry is with quality control being Chinese manufactured, uh, that's not really proven reliability yet. So I'd be concerned there. Also, it's off-road ability. I'll say it again, these scramblers really aren't made for off-road. Yes, they throw knobbies on and a little bit better suspension, but that's about it. You've still got a fairly heavy and a very pretty bike. I just wouldn't want to take this off-road and ruin the looks because I know I would drop it. But if you're someone that's just wanting to take green lanes and easy dirt roads in between your weekly commutes, this could be a great option. And even if the quality isn't there, hey, at least you didn't spend the moon on the motorcycle. You can always upgrade it or change your mind and not be out of pocket too much. So the second viewer question is from viewer Alan and he's wanting to know about the Honda Bulldog. Now the Honda Bulldog is a concept bike from Honda that was released in 2015. This is kind of based on the Honda Ruckus in that it's a very utilitarian motorcycle. It's 400 cc's and it's built for commuting and basically a do everything motorcycle. Now, I don't think that this will ever reach the manufacturing stage of being produced. And I say that because Honda kind of bring this bike out every year or two, purely just to get traffic and tongues wagging on the internet to get people in looking at Hondas. That's the purpose of this motorcycle, I think. They've never really made any indication or commitment that they're gonna go into production with this motorcycle. So I wouldn't get your hopes up. We might see it at some more shows, but never any real commitment in manufacturing this motorcycle. Honda is famous for coming out of left field and making some quirky motorcycles, so who knows really, but if I was a betting man, I'd say probably not. Now the second motorcycle Alan is asking about is the XT250 and rumors that it could be discontinued. Now I looked into this and it looks like it's Japan only at the moment and it's called the Cero 250 over there. So it looks like Japan after this year is discontinuing the XT250. I couldn't find any evidence to suggest that the XT250 is being discontinued anywhere else. So I think this is gonna be very similar to what happened with the WR250R in that the rest of the world continues to get that fantastic bike, but Japan is no longer gonna be manufacturing it for the Japanese market. So I don't think there's too much stress there yet but I uh, will keep my eye on it and uh, keep you guys up to date because it is something very important and it is a very uh, loved motorcycle. It has a big cult following, so it would be sad to go. So I'll keep one eye on any news for that motorcycle. So thanks for asking, Alan, because I think a lot of people are wanting to know about the XT250. So the third and final question comes from brand new viewer, Brad. Welcome aboard, mate, and thanks for the compliment on my videos. He's wanting to know my opinions on the 390 Adventure. Now, the first thing you need to know is I have not ridden this motorcycle, so take my opinions with a grain of salt, but I still have my opinions as always. So my thoughts on this bike are this. This is a little bit of a controversial bike in that myself included, we were, I was kind of hoping this to be more off-road orientated than what it actually is. This is clearly not a motorcycle made for hardcore off-road. What gives it away is it has quite short travel on the suspension, has quite an exposed oil filter. It also has an exhaust that's not routed up high so you can damage that pretty easily in a crash. Also, the biggest giveaway is the 19 inch front wheel and the 17 inch rear wheel. They're both cast alloy as well. So that suggests that it's happiest on the road. Uh, it can do a bit of off-road, but it's really not meant to spend a lot of time in technical terrain. This could be a very good competitor against the CB500X, and there's a huge market for these kinds of bikes. Uh, there's people out there that just don't want a 1250GS or a 1290 Super uh, Adventure. They're just too big, they're too expensive. This is a great option for the budget conscious who still wanna be comfortable, still wanna do long distances, but they also wanna be able to pick up the bike if they do drop it. So this is a great little adventure tourer, I think. So for that, it gets a thumbs up. But if you're thinking of doing some quite technical off-road, I'd stick with a CRF250L or a WR250R. So those are my thoughts, mate. 
The last topic I wanted to talk about is kind of the elephant in the room and that's what's going to happen to the motorcycle industry with the global health crisis that's currently going on. Obviously this is going to massively disrupt supply chains. It means that rider accessories, rider clothing, anything to do with motorcycles is going to get much harder to acquire. We're also seeing manufacturers close their doors. So I think uh, getting motorcycles and production of motorcycles is really going to slow down. I think KTM were completely justified in closing their doors and not risking their workers getting infected. I'm not going to criticize that at all. I also wanted to encourage all you health workers out there, all you health professionals, you're doing an amazing job and thank you. And I wanted to leave on that positive note. And as always guys, I'm Chronicles of Solid and I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.